so we're getting ready to open up and it's fine for you to bring them up to me right here. Okay, I don't have my gavel, but we'll uh, open this work session of uh, August the 30th, 2017. And welcome everybody in the audience and welcome board. And uh, we're gonna start out tonight at, uh, with some a presentation. If Eric, you wanna make any comments or we just wanna turn just, uh, Paul and- Just briefly, we appreciate the turnout tonight. We've had a, sort of an open house format from 4.30 to 6 to give folks an opportunity to look at specific plans, ask questions of staff, of the engineers, of consultants that have worked on the, on the design options and the project overall. Um, we've had a, a series of public meetings, but the, the, at your request, we wanted to have a dedicated meeting and opportunity for the board to discuss it, for the public to give further input, and to just make sure everyone understands the options that are, are before you. And, and that's what our intent is tonight, is to just provide more time to understand this is a big project, an important project, a lot of impact on the community. We want to make sure that we are uh, as clear as we can be about uh, the impacts and options that we're looking at. So uh, Paul and Jonathan uh, will walk you through uh, the project and, and answer questions for you and the public and, and uh, we're, we're glad to be able to help tonight. So go ahead and take it away, Paul. Okay, well thank you. Uh, so the goal of tonight really is to present two options or functional layouts that meet both the short-term and long-term needs of the city and the business owners along the Columbia Avenue uh, corridor as we look at the long-term improvements along that stretch. So what we're going to present is, and, I, and you've seen most of this information multiple times and every time we tweak it a little bit, but for those sitting at home in the audience, I want to make sure that they understand uh, what we're talking about and the decisions that we're trying to make today. And so we're going to look at the five lane concept with access management. And we're also going to look at the roundabout concept with access management. In my opinion, both options are going to be acceptable. Each of them have pros and cons and we've uh, gotten a lot of great feedback from business owners and, and various board members throughout this process. Ultimately, our goal is to deliver a high quality roadway uh, that functions long term for the city, but also provides business owners the opportunity to look at if they choose to reinvest in that corridor as, as time goes on and build a high quality road. So we've had a significant amount of effort has gone into uh, public input. We've had four public meetings, including the one tonight, uh, which was an open house format. We've had multiple work sessions, and in addition to that, we sent letters out to all of the impacted owners and the business owners that we had ad addresses to, and we put up message boards on the corridor to really try to make sure that we're doing as much public engagement as possible. So items that we're not considering, what we're really looking at today is back a curb to back a curb, trying to get that decision made. There's a lot of decisions that we have to make as we go forward with the project. What we're gonna come back to you with long-term is we need to look at public utilities. What do we uh, do with the overhead electric? What do we do with the three gas mains that transverse this corridor? What do we do with the water, the reclaimed water, and all the AT&T and Comcast? And so we still have to work out all those details too, but right now, again, we're focusing on back a curb to back a curb. We also are gonna come back with, uh, to look at specifically the pedestrian improvements. Now what we show today is our standard. It shows a multi-use trail on one side, and a sidewalk on the other side. That doesn't mean that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna bring back options to really look at that and work with our planners at the land use throughout there and what makes sense and ultimately re-engage the public and present those options to you. Transit's another issue. Transit needs to play a bigger role as we continue to grow in the community. And so we're gonna have to sit down with the TMA group and figure out what we need to do long-term with transit, but we'll bring that option back to you as well. But ultimately the goal is to try to finalize some of these decisions so we can get through the environmental phase or the NEPA phase associated with the project and eventually move into what's called the preliminary design phase. Uh, and so throughout this project, we've really focused in on three primary factors, safety, operations, and physical impact, and tried to balance those with providing reasonable and acceptable access to the business owners throughout this corridor. And so we're gonna go through a quick presentation on those two options. Again, the options are the five lane concept with access management and the roundabout op option with access management. And so Jonathan's gonna walk you through the presentation and then we're gonna take time to actually drive the corridor in both options so we can really dive in and look at and explain the impact that both options have. And again, there's pros and cons with both and both of them will be acceptable long-term. So I'm gonna turn this over to Jonathan to walk through the presentation. If you feel some deja vu when we're going through the presentation, that's a good thing because you've seen pieces of this presentation before. So I'll jump right into it and try to, try to be, be brief. So regional context, we all know 
uh, in front of us for Columbia Avenue. If you're local, you know Columbia Avenue, where we're talking about, but just more in a regional sense. It's one of the primary uh, U.S. and state routes north-south in Middle Tennessee. Uh, it affects Thompson Station, Spring Hill, Columbia, Nashville, Brentwood, Franklin. So there's a, there's a, there's a big regional context in that, in that roadway. More specifically, this project is between Mack Hatcher and Downs Boulevard, so it's approximately a mile in length is what we're looking at. The traffic numbers we've showed you in the past is in, in May 2016 when we did the initial counts, it's just under 19,000 cars a day uh, with truck traffic being about 7% on average at peak hours. It's about 11%, which is really high for truck traffic. April, the travel times, we actually did physical travel runs in April as well when we collected the data, and this is the summary of those results. So it ranges anywhere from three minutes and 10 seconds with no traffic, which I'm assuming they probably ran that one, you know, one o'clock in the morning. And then the longest recorded was 10 minutes and 20 seconds. And we know people have seen longer than that. They've seen shorter than that. This is just what we recorded. Future growth, what we kind of project out and see in the future, these numbers, it's very important to remember that all of these numbers we're showing you assumes that the Mac Hatcher loop is, is built in place, full, full loop around the city. So 2016, again, the existing data was just under 19,000. The build year, so when we expect to be open with the project, of, uh, assuming things progress normally, would be a roughly 20,000 cars a day, and in 2041, the, the ultimate design year would be a little over 25,000 vehicles a day. From an engineering standpoint, we look at the three main factors when we're developing these, these options to bring to you, and it's operation, safety, and physical impact of the corridor. And we'll start with the, the corridor concepts. Really what we're gonna propose are the five lane concept with access management, that's the, the kind of the true orange in the middle, and the roundabout concept again with access management. Just for comparison purposes, we've also provided data for a no build scenario and a traditional five lane concept. And what I mean by traditional is just a five lane center, center uh, twiddle down the middle, two-way left turn lane, all just very standard, typical section. So first from operations, we actually modeled what, what we think the average speed, and this is average speed running 20 hours total, 35,000 vehicles, and that, that's the, the peak hours from a full week. We basically run all those cars through the corridor in a model. And this is what we would expect to see in 2041, so the ultimate design year with those four conditions I described. So no build conditions. And to be very transparent, this is where you'll see the, the no build uh, time has changed a little bit pre from previously. We, we tried to do a more apples to apples comparison. It had some built in uh, modifiers to allow the retiming of the lights in between. The other scenarios didn't propose that, so we went ahead and took that out. So what you're seeing with a no build, it actually shows it slightly worse, but in the overall scheme of things, it really didn't change that much. The one thing to really to, to, to notice is the operations on Columbia Avenue itself, really with anything you propose, they're very similar, just for, just for operations on the mainline corridor. So your average travel time between Fairground Street and Winstead Hill is uh, roughly four and a half minutes, regardless of the option, according to the model. The operations, we try to summarize, and you've seen this summary uh, table several times, we've tried to summarize level of service data and, and really give you something that's it's really a quick jump to a slide and, and see the comparison between the different options. And that's what we've tried to do by just showing the mainline delay, which is the blue to the left and the kind of purplish color to the right, is what you would, we would expect to see on the side street delay for those, for those different options. One of the things we was re requested last time was that we present the level of service data. And I tried to include that in the presentation, but if, if you walk through the, the, the hallway and saw the big charts in the middle, there was really no good way for me to summarize that without leaving data out. So what I'm going to try to do here is just give you a general idea of what we use level of service for. And, and specifically, the level of service for signalized intersections, which is the first one I'm going to show you. And, and it's a letter grade that makes it easy to understand. The Federal Highway Administration's been using level of service letter grades for 50 or 60 years now, so people are used to seeing that A through F grade. And this is what those things mean. So a level of service A is, on, in general, less than 10 seconds of delay per whatever movement we're talking about, and that's free flow conditions, so just assume you're moving right down the street. Level of service B is slight delay, so you're starting to notice a little bit of traffic, but you're still not, you're not angry at that point. And I try to use it in anger levels of traffic when you're in traffic. But that's really what helps. They have the smiley faces like they have at the hospital for levels of pain. So, so with, with a C, 
Uh, it's still stable flow. It, it's just you start to see more cars on the, you're still moving. There's more cars on the, you got a lot, a lot of neighbors on the roadway with you. Level of service D is when you're finally starting to notice that, man, traffic's really, really starting to slow down here. Level of service E is it's really getting to where you're, you're getting, starting to get angry there. And level of service F basically means it's stopped. You're, you're in gridlock is what level of service F means. And, and notice the times there. So it, it ranges 10 seconds for level of service A, 10 to 20 seconds for level of service B, and so on, up to a level of service F, which is anything greater than 80 seconds. And this is for signalized intersections. There's a different, very similar, it's the same letter grades and the same general descriptions, but if you notice for unsignalized intersections, all-way stops, two-way stops, and roundabouts, which is a, considered an unsignalized intersection, which it is an unsignalized intersection, uses a different criteria to define those level of service letter grades. So if you notice here, the level of service F, anything greater than 50 seconds, is what we would see as a level of service F at that type of intersection. And that's really explained by the fact that when you come up to an intersection with a signal, you, you expect some delay there because there's a traffic control device there. When there's an unsignalized or it's a simple, simple control uh, intersection, there's really less, uh, there's less patience at those things. So the level of service gets a failure quicker, quicker than what you would see with a signal. So that's why there's a difference there. And I, Paul actually asked that I jump into and just show you and kind of give you a little background of the level of service data. I won't try to, to bore you with, well, if it'll let me grab it. And, and, you, and you probably won't, without zooming in really tight, you won't be able to read a whole lot here, but I will zoom in a little bit. What you're seeing with the colors there, and that's really what I wanted to describe. This is in your packet for you to look at, and we'll be glad to sit down with anybody who wants to sit down and look at it. It, it, we just put it in Granicus today. We just got the numbers finalized. Mm -hmm. And we do have the full relatives. If you'd like a, to see the, the physical paper in front of you, we, we have those as well. But what you're seeing are the, the overall level of service, the letter grades for all the major movements at the intersection, the overall intersection itself, and anything in red is what does not meet our standards. So our zoning ordinance and our street specs both say that we strive to maintain a level of service C or greater on our intersections, except for turning movements, which we allow a level of service D. So anything you see in red on, the, on this chart is what does not meet that standard. What you see in green and blue, common, common sense would tell you that if, if the only variable is time, that you would see it get worse over time. Well, in some cases, the green and blue, it actually gets slightly better over time. And the reason for that, in both the blue and the green, there's a little bit of difference there, but it's because we have detection in our signals. And basically, whatever you start out with, as the side street builds up traffic, the signal uses more of that side street time in the split. It doesn't gap out soon. So that's why you see it gets slightly better over time. So that's, that's the difference in the data. And we've tried to highlight that just to be very transparent. And ultimately, we go back to that summary corridor delay. This is the summary of that data. So that's kind of the reason why we presented it in this format rather than the big monster chart. We do have the big monster chart, and you're welcome to come and view it, and we can talk traffic delays and level of service and queue length. But this really shortens it into kind of that one slide to look at. Safety, this is the same that we've shown you in the past. Today, Columbia Avenue's a little over two and a half times greater uh, collision count than, than what the statewide average for that type of facility would be. And the fatal and injury collisions is just slightly under two times what we would expect to see in the state of Tennessee on that corridor. When we talk about safety, one of the big things we look at from, from an engineering standpoint are conflict points. And what you're seeing on these charts here the red dots are vehicular conflict points, and the purple lines and purple dots are pedestrian conflict points. And what we've done below is count up the number of vehicle conflict points to just kind of give you a comparison from a safety aspect, what each one of those conditions presents to us. This chart is similar to what you've seen, but has changed somewhat in, in the layout. What you're seeing at the, the, the baseline is 2016. So think of that line as 2016. 
The brown arrow is your no build conditions or the maroon arrow and it jumps to 2041. So what we would expect to see with just the increase in traffic between the intersections, so the segments would be 49% increase in collisions and at the intersections we would expect to see 43% increase in collisions. So when you go to that next, next line up, that's your 2041 change. So the different colors again correspond to the different options we're presenting. So that's what those changes correspond to based on those individual options. So as you can see, the, the access management increases collisions less than what no access management does. So that's really what we're trying to present there is, is just the safety factors of, and really anytime you widen a roadway, you expect to see some growth in accidents because there's more vehicles, there's more potential for collisions there. So it's very in line with what we would expect to see. Physical impact, this is, very, this is exactly what you've seen in the past. In general, the five lane on the segment itself is 91 feet back of sidewalk to back of trail. The roundabout on the segments is 83 feet from back of sidewalk to back of trail. Now the reverse of that is at the intersections themselves, which I'll jump to the next slide. Common sense, and it's, and it's very true, tells you that at the intersections, the roundabouts take up significantly more room at the intersections, but in between, they take up less. So that's what we're trying to show with those two slides. And this is ultimately the data summary that we've seen before. Um, but you didn't put the numbers down for the, you didn't put the numbers down for the intersections. Which numbers? How, how, we, how, how wide they were, the measurements. Well, it, it, it changes. There's really not a good way to show that exactly. Uh, but but it, the, 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 I will say the roundabout at an intersection is significantly more. And you'll see that on the drive-throughs that we do. And this, this data chart is a summary of all the data we've shown you. So if you really want one chart to go back and look at from this presentation, this is the one that shows you kind of all this data in one, one space. And really that leads me to where Paul's going to pick up and go through the, uh, the actual drive-throughs. So what we're going to do now is drive through first the five lane access management plan and we'll essentially go property by property. If you have questions, feel free to, to ask and uh, we will do our best to answer it and then we'll move on to the roundabout option and we'll just drive you through that corridor and really try to highlight the pros and cons of both and, and some of the impacts that uh, you'll see to some of these properties as we go forward. So really starting, I'm going to Okay, so really starting right here at uh, Mac Hatcher in Columbia Avenue, uh, what we're looking at is essentially, uh, let me back up first. So the access management approach that we took with both options is we wanted to provide obviously acceptable access to all businesses throughout the corridor to the best of our ability. Where we could shift access points from the main line to the side street, that's what we basically propose where we could reduce access points and combine and share access on the roadway, we proposed to do that with both options. And again, uh, our goal was to basically improve operation safety, the physical impact, and provide reasonable access to the business owners. And so starting here at Mac Hatcher and uh, Columbia Avenue, what you're looking at north of the intersection, we're proposing to build out at full capacity. So that way, uh, when Mac Hatcher is eventually extended or widened, uh, that we're not having to disrupt businesses north of Mac Hatcher two or three times. So we build it out to full capacity, get all the utilities in the right location, and it would just eventually limit impacts long term to those businesses. So southbound, you're looking at having two double left turn lanes, a through lane, a right turn lane. You'll notice the hatching. The hatching there is essentially for when Mac Hatcher is extended to have a dedicated right turn lane, again, long term. Uh, and you can see we, we show a sidewalk and a trail, but again, we're not trying to make a decision on that today. We're simply focusing on back a curb to back a curb and how these intersections function long term. Mm -hmm. What you see in the middle is a, uh, a concrete median. We could look at other options there, stamp mm -hmm. concrete, brick pavers. There's, there's a whole lot of different things we could do, mm -hmm. but we're proposing some type of a median there. And so the first property that I'd highlight is the a Williamson. Raised median? A, yes, a raised correct. median, a six inch raised median. Wire? That is the uh, right white line that you see separating the northbound okay. and southbound lanes. Right here. So if okay. you see all these exhibits, if you see it in gray, it's, it's proposed to be concrete. Home. 
So if you look at the funeral home, what you would that notice is yeah. that their southern yeah. access point, as we're proposing with access management, is to basically uh, convert that to a right in, right out. It'd be reinforced with a, a median. Uh, they have another access point to the traffic signal, which where, from a safety and operation standpoint, that's where we would prefer to drive those people that are making the left turn movements. Again, those left turn movements are what's critical. It's where a lot of injury accidents happen, and that's what we try to eliminate to improve operations and safety along the corridor. You also notice that we're adding additional laneage just to improve the long-term efficiency and operation of that traffic signal. And then we'll continue to head north. And again, mm -hmm. between uh, the funeral homes signal and the shopping center signal to Shadow Green Drive, uh, you'll notice that there is, a, again, a center median, concrete median there that separates the northbound, southbound traffic. Our recommendation would be to take the, the access at the Kroger fuel station and convert that to a right in, right out. It'd be reinforced with a uh, <laughs> center median. And so I'll highlight the median for mm -hmm. those that can see. I'll do it on all screens. That's proposed as a median. So as we continue to uh, head northbound, the, the Keeling Company has an access on Columbia Avenue. Again, back to those access management standards, we propose to shift their main access on the Southeast Parkway. You can see that they have a storage yard there, and so it would have an impact on their operation. We'd have to work with them uh, to, to reconfigure there, but we would propose to shift their access long-term onto Southeast Parkway. As we continue northbound, there's the Burger King. Today it has a write-in only, and so that remains unchanged with this option. It would, again, be a write-in only. And this is where we convert the road and, and remove the median and go more towards your typical five lane section with a centered uh, left turn lane. And so with the, the car bazaar there in the corner pub, the, the car bazaar has two access points. We propose to eliminate the southern access point and have a sh one shared access point uh, to the north with the corner pub and across the street is Alpha Drive. Mm -hmm. In this option, it is not proposed to be signalized uh, which during peak hour periods, it will be very difficult mm -hmm. given the traffic volumes to make a left turn out. Uh, unsignalized. From go Alpha back Drive. to the Burger King. No, go go back to the Burger King. How do you, or if you're coming from town, how do you make a left into the Burger King? Well, today, yeah, today you're not supposed to make a left into the Burger There's King. It's supposed lane. to be a right in. Well, order. how do you get in? You use Alpha Drive. Alpha Drive. There's a turning mm -hmm. lane right now. There, there might be a turning lane, but it's a definitely a right in only. It's a right in. It's, it was poorly yeah. designed. It was a right. It's a right in only, but it, people use it as a left in and a right in and a right out and okay. a little bit of I everything. I go right out, but I go left yes. in. So okay. to access the burger, here, you, here, this right. way. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. You go in here. Yeah, but if you can't get into, if Alpha is not, if it's not signalized, how are you going to get in? How are you going to turn left? So they'll have to basically wait till there's a gap and they'll have to come into Alpha Drive and they'll use, through connectivity, they'll go through the shopping center here. So again, they'll make a left turn into Alpha through connectivity. There's access easements that should be platted there that provide that connectivity and I'll show it over here. Come in on the Alpha Drive and into Burger King and access these facilities. Okay. Uh, so Paul, Paul, uh, on that, just while you're on that mm -hmm. sheet, how, what's the um, uh, distance in, in feet between the signalization at Southeast and uh, Alpha Drive? Do you know that? I, I do not have that exact number. Um, you know, approximately? I do, a good guess? I mean... I don't know. The concern really is Century Court, the proximity there. The, there's a signal there at Century Court to the, to the, to the, north, the north. Oh, and yeah. they're extremely close. And that's less than, uh, less than 300 less feet, than if I remember off yeah, the top okay. of my head. Right. And then, so from our standpoint, you can't, you yeah. can signalize every roadway, but poorly spaced signals and too many signals, you will never be able to get progression through the corridor. You'll never be able to move that mainline traffic. Mm -hmm. And so at some of these locations, you know, we're not proposing signals because we don't feel that we can make the corridor work long term. Uh, and and it, it, it will make, again, the left turning movements very difficult long term with this yep. option. Yep. So as we continue to mm -hmm. head to the north, uh, yeah, you have okay. the guidance center. They have an access point right there on Columbia. Uh, their, their main access point would then be shifted to Alpha Drive. Uh, you have the, the quilt store and then there's the RIP or the regional intervention uh, 
program facility and the private, the one private resident on Columbia Avenue. What we would look at doing there is have a shared access point to, sh to drive them really to the signalized intersection. I can show that on all screens here. Um, so this is the quilting store. They'd all access this signal. The private residents would access this signal. Uh, the regional intervention program would have access to that signal right there. And I'll show it on these exhibits too. So Don't again, need laser surgery now. <laughs> again, these, these three properties would have access right here at Century Court to the traffic signal. Yeah. As we continue and look on the uh, west side, the uh, salon, we'd, we'd look to eliminate their access and have some type of shared access easement or public, public access off of Century Court along with the Guitar Center. Uh, the Crutcher's Auto Repair, there's actually three parcels there that are separate today. We would look to work with them to try to provide some other level of connectivity through there to access all three properties or work with that property owner to provide their primary access off the side street. Again, on the Crutcher's Auto Repair, we look to eliminate their primary access onto mm -hmm. the main line or onto Columbia Avenue. Wait, wait, just a minute. Corner Pub, hmm. where will, uh, where will the, that be, where will the access be? Shared with okay. Car Bazaar. By Car Bazaar. So it would have a shared access. It's shared here today. It's very similar to where it's at today. Yeah, this okay. is exactly where All it right. is today. The access point for Car Bazaar is right here that we would propose to eliminate. Okay. Again, and shared access to one common location. And main event? Uh, the main event, we would look to have some type of access easement here, which is not in place today. Uh, we would try to work with these two business owners to, again, give them their primary access off Century Court, which is signalized. Yep. That's where I go every. <laughs> so as, and I'm real interested in that. As we continue to head uh, north, you'll notice the Auto Masters. We would look to have a shared a shared access easement there. It's basically shared today to some degree uh, with a median. And across the street, there's a few businesses that use that access point. Again, very difficult during peak hours to make that left turn movement out. Uh, but we, we need to provide reasonable and acceptable access to those businesses. As we continue farther to the north, you have Beasley Drive, uh, and you, you would have the Market Masters and the Solar Solution. Their primary access would be on to, to Beasley Drive across the street. It accesses <coughs> the Little Shopping Center, O'Reilly's, and uh, our public one of our access points to the Public Works facility. We do not propose to signalize it, again, just because of signal spacing and trying to maintain progression through the corridor, it would become uh, very difficult to signalize that long term uh, so again during those peak hours it, it would be difficult it's also the reason why we put in the uh, century beasley connector road to provide access uh, between the two roadways so with the solar solutions and the, and the market masters one thing we looked at critically is as a gas station we have to be able to bring in a fuel truck circulate the fuel truck so that they can refuel refuel the fuel tanks and so what we propose to do is eliminate their northern access, but give them a right in so that the, the fuel trucks and, and, and uh, customers can still access the business. So that for what? So that a fuel truck can pull in, refuel. Where? I didn't. The market master. Solar master? Solution. It's the market master gas station right here. Oh, okay. And the solar solution. This is a right okay. in. Okay. And their, their gas tanks, I believe, are right here. So they'd have to, regardless, they got to get a fuel truck in. And so we proposed to leave that access mainly to accommodate the business. Yep. As we continue to head uh, mm -hmm. farther north, you get to the Rolling Hills Community Church with the YMCA soccer fields. Uh, the church has two access points today. Uh, we propose to uh, make one a right in, right out. The northern one would become a right in, right out, reinforced with a median. And the southern one would remain a full access point. Uh, the, the, the Franklin Business Park to the east uh, their southern access would become a right in, right out, reinforced with a median. Uh, no, no major impacts to the, to the adjacent property owners. They have other access points that they can uh, use to try to control access. As we go forward farther north, you have the Longview development, which is proposed to connect uh, right here next to our uh, the, the Lasco access point, which also serves uh, our public works facility. is signalized today. It's proposed to be signalized long term. Uh, and, and then headed north, we would propose to put in a median, again, just really to separate your northbound, southbound traffic, uh, provides a level of safety. It helps with overall operations. Go back to Ray's that little, that inter the big intersection right there. Is that how they, those big trucks are going to get out? And yes. Signal? 
So the, the Lasco trucks, this is their primary point of where they mm -hmm. would enter and exit. That's the way it is now. That's yes, the way it is today. It's for public works. And it would it remain the same. Public, public, works. Works. Yes, public works comes out there. Public works comes. those in the audience, the Lasco trucks there. with access right here. Yeah, Margaret would go here too. Yeah. Okay. okay, so as we continue here, to here, here. head to the north to Confederate Drive and Wortham Circle, uh, again, the auto repair store on the east side, southeast corner of the intersection, we propose to take their access on Columbia and shift it to the side street, uh, mainly just because of the proximity there to that, that intersection. You have the Hardys there. We would propose to eliminate the, the north access point to Columbia Avenue and again, shift it to Confederate Drive. Uh, to again keep, keep with those access management principles of controlling access but providing reasonable access to the businesses. And that intersection will be signalized in, in the long term. Yes, with thank you. With this project it would be signalized. That is, propo yep, that is proposed to be signalized. So, so that uh, Longview property would have access coming off Worthen Circle, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that's correct. Actually n no access off of Columbia. No other access. Right. They, they have two access points, one at Worthen Circle and obviously that's supposed to circle around over to the Lasco entrance as well. Okay. Long term. I mean, over to where? So uh, over to... Confederate? As proposed now with the preliminary plat, the, the, the circle basically mm -hmm. comes back here and connects here with the Lasco signal long term. Oh. It just hasn't developed so that, yet. Okay. And so it'll eventually just basically do a big loop. So over here, that would be their own ac only access point there okay. off of Columbia. Then, at the yeah, so they'd have two. access to two signals. Yeah, yeah. got it. Sorry, John. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So again, the Hardys, we would propose to eliminate that north access point, but we would move it to Confederate Drive, where we feel it's uh, more appropriate to have it on the side street and provides them directs people to the the signalized intersection. So as we continue to head north, what you'll notice is in both options from this point to the north are exactly the same of what we're proposing, but I'll, I'll go through it with both, both exhibits. So with the Moody's Tire uh, and Auto Service, we would look to uh, eliminate some of their, uh, their access points there on the frontage and shift it north to a shared access point to the county property, uh, which is hmm. currently used by the TMA group. Again, we feel that that provides good reasonable access to the businesses. At the Kubota, uh, most of their customers, from our observations, uh, park on car, and that's how they access the store. And so they could continue to do that. Uh, can I ask then, a question? Yes. Is there a road, and I think there is, I'm not sure, that connects car and Confederate? Yes, ma'am. Car comes all the way around and ties into Confederate. Okay. Thank you. So the, the, the county property or the one occupied by the TMA group, the northern entrance, we would uh, convert that to a right in, right out. <laughs> Uh, because again they have the shared access point just to the south mm -hmm. as we continue farther to the north i'm going to focus in on the eastbound this properties the about. so yeah. the, the Kubota property yeah. there has uh, two access points i believe to columbia yeah, avenue yeah. Uh, from from what we can tell it's where their large vehicles come in to drop off equipment uh, I, i'm not sure whether customers use it or not but ultimately what we would we look to do and recommend is is to start uh, some of the connectivity on as as proposed in the columbia avenue local network plan which is the the public road it says private drive but it would be a public street to the east there and that that could provide access to the rear of the Kubota facility for those large trucks to access and deliver equipment it would also provide them access to the proposed or the existing signal at downs boulevard you also have the the cnf tire company they have a two access points we would look to shift their access point off of that public roadway to the north um, and eliminate the their the direct access to Columbia Avenue again, trying to push and drive them to the signalized intersection, and so we'd have to sit down with them and really work on what the best location is to access uh, that building so that you're not coming into the rear from that cul-de-sac, and that's something we would we would do as we continue to move forward. If you look at the True Value Garden Store and the the Harpeth True Value Center on the west side, uh, we would propose to do one shared access point, which is a right in right out. It, this is a very difficult property, mainly given its uh, proximity or location to the intersection is so close. The concern is uh, it, it, it's a difficult movement to make a left turn out there, especially with the turn lanes there. Mm -hmm. And during PM, AM, PM, midday peak periods, you're gonna have substantial stacking there at the intersection, which makes it very difficult. Uh, so we would discourage that and, and recommend going to a right in, right out that provides shared access there. 
Uh, they'd have another primary access point onto Downs Boulevard, uh, which we'd, we'd have to sit down with them and, and look at how that works as we move forward. As we continue to head farther north on the east, you have the Napa Auto Parts. Again, we would look to, to relocate their access from the main line or Columbia Avenue off of that uh, private drive or the public drive there where we're proposing to do the cul-de-sac <coughs> and they'd have access onto Avondale Avenue. Now, Avondale Avenue also serves a bunch of residential homes in that area. One of the reasons we'd recommend the right in, right out is because we do have good connectivity and there are other options for them to use the street network uh, to, to go farther north and make a left or find another location to make a left. Our concern, again, is just how close it is to the intersection. Making left turns out of there is very difficult and we're trying to improve the safety long term and that's why we propose that as a right in, right out. The deli there would have a right in, right out and we would uh, look to have some type of shared access on the north side uh, with the little strip center there. And then on the west side, we're not showing access points and this was pointed out during the, uh, the public meeting, but we would absolutely have to provide at least one access point to these properties. It's their only access. And so as we get into the preliminary design, uh, the two properties to the north, we would give them an access to Columbia Avenue or, or some type of a shared access point. Uh, the, the Langford Motors there, we would look to try to shift their access point on the Downs Boulevard, which would be uh, a, little, a little better, safer long term. And so that's a summary of the, the five lane option. One thing I do want to scroll down and highlight <coughs> is as Jonathan talked about, is the roundabouts definitely have a, a bigger impact at the intersections. Uh, there's, there's no debating that. One thing I want you to notice is that with the five lane section, you have the center turn lane. And right here at the Car Bazaar uh, and the advanced auto parts, uh, you can see that with the, with the trail system, you're getting into some of that parking. And I'm pointing this out really to show, highlight the difference in physical impact between the roundabout and, and the access controlled five lane section. And so we'll, we'll look at that with the five lane section, but I want you to notice how it's over the cars. Ultimately, when we get into the design of this, we're gonna work on that alignment as much as we can to limit impacts to as many business owners as possible. So I'm gonna go, if there's no more questions, we can move on to the roundabout concept. What, what's the um, impact on um, utilities? Uh, how far into the properties? Do we have any so idea? Because uh, I was aware of our last meeting that we had quite a bit of impact on the properties with five lane into the, the utilities. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. We have multiple gas mains. We're gonna have sewer, we're gonna have reclaimed water, we're gonna have water, and we're gonna have to find locations for this. We have overhead electric if that goes depending on which direction we go with it. If it goes underground or relocated to one side, we'll have to really dive into those details. We don't have that information, but I would suspect there'll be increased impact to some degree when we start really looking at the needs of the utilities. <clears throat> Ideally, we're gonna put as much of that in the street as we can, uh, but we're gonna have to you know, sit down with all the utility agencies and truly understand their needs. Is that greaterly, uh, is that more, is it, uh, what's the question I want to ask? Is it is there a greater impact for the properties and the utilities with the properties with five lanes? Is from the going, utility standpoint you're alone, going into no, the not property really. More? It's the same utilities the same anyway. Uh, so the utilities are really it's it's going to be ultimately be up to the board and the utilities individually about whether you decide you want to put utilities within the right of way or whether you want utilities outside of the right right away whether you want them above ground whether you want them below ground so there's a lot of decisions right. that have to be made but regardless the utilities are really uh, between the two options there's really no consequential differences well, so there's, there's, not a, there's not a big consequential difference but they're they could get out of the, out of what we're showing today i think is the point so it, it could be great yes. oh yes very much depending so. on the utilities need and their ability to maintain the infrastructure yeah because when we first looked at the five lanes that was one of the concerns that would be a greater impact so now you're saying maybe not well, no the, but the utilities themselves there will be additional impact from utilities one way or the other there will be additional impact but the difference is between the two options the five lane or roundabout that wasn't what we said okay. before but so what, what we'll do is once we get this decision made we're going to start focusing in on the utilities and how we handle bike ped and the transit aspect of it and have to bring that all all back to the board to, to get a decision made on those items but but when you say it's it's a question of whether you want it in the roadway or out of the roadway. It's not a question of what we want. It's a question of what is required. 
yeah, that'll drive a lot of the decisions, our sure. ability to, to be able to maintain it. Yeah. Sewer 20 feet deep, for example, can't really go yeah. in the middle of a five lane. It's very difficult to put in the middle of a five lane roadway. We'd have to locate that at an yeah. appropriate location. Well, you should wouldn't leave that up to us because we, we're not the professionals. Uh, ultimately, without getting too far off on utilities, the, the ultimate decision for utilities that where it involves the board is, in many cases, a utility likes to locate, and you, know, you can see it on Hillsborough, right. they like to locate outside of the roadway. It's easier for their maintenance. And in the future, when we come back, if we were to widen the roadway another 20 years from now, to rip it we, all. Have, we have to replace their utilities. We have to buy them new easements. If yeah. they locate in our right-of-way, typically what's required is that when we, when we change the roadway, they move the utilities at their own dime. Or the board, this is where the board would get involved. The board has the option of saying, you can put your utilities inside of our right-of-way to limit to limit disturbance of the properties, and in the future we won't hold you responsible for moving those. We'll take that burden on, knowing that you put them here at our request. We don't have to talk about that. Yeah. And, okay. And undergrounding, and there's a, there's a big difference between that. underground electric and overhead electric as far as the impact sure. that it has, and that's something we'll have to, to work with the board on. So moving on to the roundabout option, uh, again, it's this is exactly the same. This initial phase here, north of Mac Hatcher, looking to build it out. To full capacity uh, it's, it's not shown here but we would we would put the full median uh, from on, on this section of Columbia Avenue here down where there's there's no access anyways just to again separate northbound and southbound traffic with the roundabout option uh, very similar with the Williamson Memorial Funeral Home their southern access point would be right in right out reinforced with a median again we would drive everybody to the roundabout or the intersection uh, control and, and again you can you see here there is a bigger impact with the roundabout at the intersection and we'll we'll look at the that's one of the disadvantages to it and we'll look at uh, one, of, one of the criticisms we consistently hear about roundabouts is that it won't be able to handle the truck traffic and, and what I continuously tell people that is if when roundabouts are designed appropriately it will handle the truck traffic when a signalized intersection is designed appropriately it will handle the truck traffic we have many signals and signal poles out there throughout the city that have dents and dings in them <laughs> from large trucks catching them as they turn and make bends and so the same principles apply to both and in this corridor with a large percentage of truck traffic we would absolutely design these roundabouts to accommodate that and that's what our designers have done here today is shown the size of those roundabouts to accommodate those large vehicles so as we continue to head to the north uh, this this option basically proposes a center line median between all the roundabouts again we're trying to control access provide reasonable access to the business owners and improve safety and so from roundabout to roundabout there would be a raised uh, median so at the kroger fuel station there the shopping center's northern access point that would be a right in right out reinforced uh, with a median as we continue to head farther to the north this this shows we are able to keep more of the access points on the main line with the roundabout option just because it's the median is essentially eliminating those left turns and so in this option with the key link company uh, you're maintaining their primary access off of columbia and their access point off of southeast parkway at some point in time whenever we were at, when we were looking at connecting the under construction portion there with the road behind or to the west of the fuel station weren't we looking at eliminating that, that that's point? a that's a very good question the uh the board has a condition on the developer that when that connection is made that 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 access point shall be eliminated now we have been working closely with the property owner and looking at options uh we 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 were looking at bringing that plat back essentially to the board uh, with with a recommendation to look at our ability to maintain a right in right out there is ultimately what we have been evaluating and looking at uh, again if we can provide it and it's not having a major impact we would propose to leave it uh, but the condition on the developer at this point was to eliminate, to eliminate that the second it. that connection happened so, so, that's, we'll, so that's possibly one point that, that you're that is possibly okay. one point one thing this map doesn't show is now there's an access off of uh, uh, behind the dental office down to the uh, Correct, Kroger fuel area. yeah old area. so as we continue to head farther north again there's a medium between roundabouts uh, we, we talked 
specifically the Burger King again it would just have a write-in that's what it is today we propose to leave that reinforce it with a median to prevent the illegal turning movements into it uh, one thing I do want to point out is with the car the car bazaar uh, it, it's a it's a smaller typical section through there so with the five lane section you'll notice that we are getting into a lot of the parking there in this option with a with a thinner typical section no center turn lane we're able to tr to limit the impact i'm not going to say save all the parking spots because we don't truly know that today but we're able to limit the impact on on some of that property there because it's a thinner typical section between roundabouts uh and one thing to highlight here where you're seeing the big safety difference from the presentation from between the roundabouts and the the, the signalized <laughs> Uh, five lane section is again the access management the median down the middle so you're limiting all those left turns in the median in between the actual intersections themselves and forcing the left turns or the u-turns through the intersections so that's where that that big <coughs> safety gain comes from is that little concrete island in the middle so as we continue to head farther north that alpha drive would be a right in right out one one question that we consistently get is if i come out of alpha drive and i want to head southbound how do i how do i go southbound and the answer we'd be giving is the, that's what the roundabout is perfect for. You could head northbound, go all the way around the roundabout, and then be heading mm -hmm. southbound. And so that's that's what we're advocating for, and that's why we think the the round or the uh, the median works, the full median and full access control works in this option. But again, both options are acceptable. So as we continue to head farther north, uh, this is where uh, one of the negatives about roundabouts is at the intersections it does have a big impact, and so you'll notice that. Uh, the guitar center there uh, is a is a big impact to that property. It's covered up. Uh, the it's a big out. impact. <laughs> it's, it's a big impact. That, that's the understatement of the night. Yeah. <laughs> how about how about complete take? Complete take. Yeah. How about total? Let's <laughs> be honest. Yes. Go on. Yeah. So the and also the the building to the north of the regional. built square or the quilling store, which is a regional intervention programs there. That's a complete taking as well. Uh, again, some of the other businesses were looking to shift their access to uh, Century Court or use shared access easements or right away uh, to provide better connectivity to the private resident and to the quilt store. Mm -hmm. It's important to note we are able to maintain the Crutcher's Auto, the, the access directly off Columbia with this option as well. How does the private residence get out at that point? Uh, it, it doesn't show up, but what we would look at is providing a... Uh, connectivity this is a complete taking as you stated yes and so this is basically going to become public right away and we would work to relocate their driveway over to this area same with the uh, quilt store they'd have basically a, a nice room. access here plenty of room plenty of room, plenty of room. so as we continue to head to the north uh, you'll notice the auto masters it's the same same exact thing they'd have a, a shared access point there uh, and access to Beasley Drive, uh, Public Works, the, our, our facility, the, the shopping center would have right in, we'd convert those to right in, right outs. It's again reinforced with a median. Uh, at, at the Market Masters, they had a, with the five lane option, it was a right in only option. Uh, under this option, we would uh, allow it to be a right in, right out because again, you're eliminating those left turn movements. Okay, so from our Public Works, they would have to go up to the next roundabout to head south they would uh for, especially for the uh the, the shopping center and the o'reilly's parts the public works facility would just use the access roadway so we've got well they could they could the, go to the next center but i mean yeah so continuing north with the uh, rolling hills community church uh you know both their access points would be converted to right in right out reinforced with a median uh, same with the southern access point to uh, the Franklin Business Park in, in Lasco. Here you can see replacing the signal uh, with a roundabout. Again, it's a, it's a big impact at the intersection. Uh, but we, we, again, we're making sure we're sizing them appropriately to handle the large truck maneuvers. As we continue to head north, again, same concept with a, a median all the way to the roundabout. Uh, what we're looking at here is... Uh, shifting some of the access points there for the Hardys onto Confederate and, and the auto repair store would be able to maintain their access point. Uh, the Taco Bell uh, would maintain their access point on Worthen Circle. We tried to shift as much of the roundabout onto the vacant property uh, as we possibly could, but that, that will have an impact on that landowner that we'll have to look at. 
Never mind. Okay. As we continue to head north, uh, good this question. Is, I, I have I have one. Go back down to the to the uh, right turn in, right turn out between business Franklin Business Park and the YMCA soccer fields. Is that? And I don't want to. I mean, I drive up and down through there consistently. Mm -hmm. What kind of an intersection is that? Hmm. Right now. Yeah. Uh, right now, it's a it's right a now it's full, full access. It's full access. It's, yeah, it's, it's a full one, access. It's a one leg now. stop. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly during those big Europe, yeah. soccer events, most of the people will try to go over to the signal. Some people will make the mistake of going to that southern access point, and it's extremely difficult to get in. Basically, today it's a shortcut of the signal. It's a shortcut of if you don't yeah. want to wait at the signal, you come out there. That's but right. It's very dangerous. A lot of folks use it when they're like Paul said when they're playing soccer. A lot of cars park right along that access drive. But for the most part, public works, the trucks, they'll, they're going to no, go. No, they, won't, they wouldn't use it. They'll go down to the traffic signal. Oh, that's that's, that's mm -hmm. the design. That's what we said we wanted to do when we did the road, mm -hmm. that's right. the traffic signal, yep. all of that, and bought the building over there. So that's, I just didn't, I, I just didn't remember. I remember being a, a gravel <laughs> driveway off, mm -hmm. off of Columbia Avenue. So as we continue to head north again this is once you get past this roundabout up to car avenue it's it's the same exact option in both scenarios but i'll, I'll walk through it again very briefly you have moody's tire and auto service we'd eliminate uh, some of their multiple access points and again try to combine that and have a shared access point with the tma group which is the owned by the actually williamson county uh, car avenue we're proposing as a right in right out uh, and that would provide access to the Kubota where a lot of their uh, customers park. As we continue to head north, uh, the, again, the public drive with the cul-de-sac would provide access also to the Kubota property, to the collision center, to CNF Tire. Uh, we'd have to work closely with those, those business owners on exactly where those access points are. Uh, the True Value Garden Center and the Harpa True Value Home Center, uh, just given its proximity to the intersection, trying to accommodate everybody we'd recommend it right in right out uh, and shifting that access point over on to uh, Downs Boulevard as we continue to head north again it's the same option Napa Auto Parts could could have an access off of the public road <laughs> slash cul-de-sac on the east side uh, they'd have access off of Avondale Avenue which again given its proximity to the intersection uh, we'd, we'd recommend a right in right out and, and those properties to the west we'd work with them to bribe them at least one access point to Columbia Avenue. And for the corner property, we'd put their access point onto Downs Boulevard. Uh, and so that said, that, that's a overview of both options. Again, we wouldn't present them if we didn't think they were acceptable. And we'd open up to questions. So the Lankford motor would only have one access. Be one access and off it's of off the, Downs. Correct. Off of Downs Boulevard. Right turn in, right turn out, or? No, it would, it would be full <laughs> access on Full access? Boulevard, yes. Okay. Yeah. How much oh, sorry. As I ask this question, I am not suggesting a preference. So when I ask this question, I'm not suggesting a preference. Is it fair to summarize this presentation by saying that the roundabout option narrows the road, improves the traffic, improves the safety, but has a big impact on two businesses being completely taken and out of business, out of business. and the compared to the five lane access control is wider ostensibly carries less traffic and is not as safe and has a greater impact in terms of parking and accesses up and down the length of the project that is a fair statement it is a fair statement that the five lane carries less traffic. Uh, that was part of what he, yeah, what he look, said. Looking at the level of service, there's not a, a huge difference mm -hmm. if you look at just the strict level of service A, B, C, and D charts that Jonathan put together. <coughs> uh, but going back to that presentation, there is definitely an improvement based on our modeling of how the roundabout corridor compared to the five lane. Again, there's pros and cons to both options. But there's definitely an improvement with the roundabout options overall as it relates to moving <coughs> traffic north and south. 
And the major driver there again is the median down the middle. Is the what? The, the median down the middle of the roundabout corridor. That is what? The, the major driver behind oh. the operational efficiency there okay. and, and the safety. But, but on, their, on your access, uh, limited access, you also have medians on the five lane. Yes, we there do have several so, places. Yeah, there are sections. And, and that's an adjustment that was made in the design to try to help with some of the safety concerns that we saw in the initial cut of the, uh, of the five lane design. So they went and tried to address the weaknesses or the concerns on each of the designs, eliminated the one roundabout on the, on the one roundabout, to, or the roundabout option, but then also integrated some medians where we could to help with the safety and access issues. Other questions? Uh, Alderman question. Peters. Uh, on Downs Boulevard, how much stacking is there? I have, you know, I have no idea about how long that is, but, but if you're trying to get out, and there looks to be a median there also, how, on, how would you get out from uh, Harpeth True Value? <coughs> on Downs Boulevard, we're not proposing a median. It's a it double would just be lane. striped. Just striped. Oh, that's striped. It's just be striping, yes, ma'am. And the, the turn lanes are essentially sized to accommodate the, the growth period that we're projecting. So the stacking, uh, as projected, should be within those lanes. I mean, how many how many uh, car lengths is it though? I just yeah, I, I, have, I have no yeah. idea. We have to pull that chart up. We can we'll pull be glad that chart to look up. If you'd like us to look, we'd mm -hmm. be glad to. Mm -hmm. Other comments or questions? <coughs> Ready to take some public comments? Yes. Um, first is Michael Phillips. We'll give you a couple of minutes, Michael. <coughs> last today. Uh, Michael Phillips of the 417 Gambrell Court <coughs> in uh, Franklin. Got an excerpt from uh, our zoning ordinance, <coughs> zoning ordinance of the city of Franklin. Uh, and among its many purposes is to lessen congestion in the streets and ensure the service demands on new development will not exceed the capabilities of existing streets. What I want to get to is uh, the minimum level of service standards the following minimum levels of service shall be maintained before, during, and after development and redevelopment, which means all the time. Subject to the standards in this subsection, which are all, ro all roadway segments and intersections shall maintain at least a level of service C. Lanes used for turning movements within intersections shall maintain a level of service D. So all our roads, all the time, level of service C uh, or better intersections, level of service D. Um, our staff has said that both options are acceptable. Our zoning ordinance disagrees with them. Uh, our staff said uh, our, our policies stri say strive to maintain LOSC Level service C, they actually say we must, or sorry, says we shall maintain level of service C. Um, the five lane still fails on every segment. The level of service uh, on the roundabouts passes, except for where we've added back uh, a traffic signal at, at downs, to which basically feels like a compromise to everybody who's so adamantly against the roundabouts. When we take that light out, put the, low, the roundabout back in, now that brings it back up to standards. This isn't an option, you know, the option is not between the five lane or the roundabouts. The option is, do you follow our guidance or our requirements in the zoning ordinance, or you do, do you ignore the requirements in our zoning ordinance? Thank you. Mr. Crutcher. Hello. I actually came and spoke at the public input meeting. Some of you may have been here, some maybe not, but 
I actually Please speak into the microphone. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I work on it, I'm trying to get down there to it. Um, I actually came to that meeting to speak to this group. Um, probably should have saved that for here. Tonight, I came more with questions. Not sure that this is the proper forum for that. But um, I do want to say before anything that the last thing I want to portray is a combative anti-change attitude and I respect the job you guys have to do and would not want to do that because you can't please everyone in this room so just wanted to lead with that um, the last time I was here to summarize I felt like we came down and watched a roundabout presentation a, a sales pitch for roundabouts and with what I do, by the way, um, Jamie Crutcher from 1906 Columbia Avenue, we have the auto repair shop there. Um, figuring out facts and some theory is how I think, you know, details and, and I need reliable data to make decisions on just like you guys do. And one of the things that stood out to me at the last presentation was a little bit of data integrity that a lot of assumptions have been made on. And not to beat a dead horse, I just want to run by that and then I'll get to my questions that, that are based off of this. Um, I don't know where the error was, but the three minutes and 10 seconds that remains in the proposal today was initially between Maccatcher Parkway and Downs Boulevard. Um, that sounded funny to me, and I mentioned it the last time, actually spoke to the mayor, I know he was sitting on the front line here. Um, I actually went back and measured that myself, just doing the math of the, the distance of 1.1 miles and the speed limits. The actual time is a minute and 45 seconds, so that's a 45% error in the initial presentation. Now the presentation has been updated. The three minutes and 10 seconds remain, which applying math to that is 257, so that's yeah. down to I'm a 7%. I'm gonna you to kind of start wrapping up if you okay. would. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to go fast. Um, that's a 7% error, but they stretched the section of road for the statistic to Battle Avenue and Winstead Elementary which seems a little out of context because we're not widening that much road. You know, we're addressing a very specific corridor. So the base statistic there seems wrong, which seems like it would lead to all the statistics being skewed to some degree. I don't know how to fix that, but the most identifiable piece of data was 47%, 45% wrong. That said, um, I just had a few questions and my concerns with the roundabout concept are as a commuter because I drive it up and down that road in addition to our business at least two to four times a day to get my son to school. Um, I come down to Franklin on the weekends. I was born here. I've always been here. Um, we come down to the restaurants, go home, Columbia Avenue, and I know the roundabouts are going to have a 24-hour impact. Um, and I'll try to shoot through these, and maybe, Jonathan, maybe you can point me in the right direction to it. I think if you have a group of questions uh, it's, for staff, it would be fine to. Uh, well, the one, the one reason I brought this here. I'm trying to be fair to everybody that's going to speak. Can understood. Can I, I think a lot of people need to know the answer to these questions is the reason I brought them here. Um, the first of which is, is there a timeline to spend the granted funds on this project? No, not, not in short term, no. Okay, so in that case, is the no-build option still a reality? Because that had been mentioned as an option. The no-build option, in, in just the speaking of grant funding, while there's not a timeline on the grant funding itself, you must show progress in spending the money once it's awarded. So the no-build option, is, is, it's always an option, but it's not like you maintain the money in a, a savings account or anything like that. It okay. goes back into the hopper. Well, the reason I ask is if the project could drag along in planning to see the 
Northwest extension of Mac Hatcher come to fruition, which is in this similar timeline, we could at least assess what impact that has to this road. The 2041 plan numbers you yes, guys sir. are using I, is- I, I'm, I, You're putting me in an awkward spot because I've kind of set the timeline for okay. people to speak. Understood. So uh, if you want to just read your questions very quickly, I'll allow you to do that. And uh, then I'll have you get back with Jonathan as far as those answers. Okay. Those answers can be circulated to the board. Absolutely. All right. And, and answered publicly too. And, and I won't- Sure. Yeah, we can I won't necessarily place. even go through all of these. Um, I served 10 years with the rescue squad. Um, the medians between the roundabouts created a particular concern for me when it comes to emergency vehicles going up and down that corridor because I believe there's enough traffic outbound to clog both lanes of that corridor at which point emergency vehicles will have a problem. So I guess my suggestion and question is how do the police chief, EMS director feel about this? Um, I'll skip through the rest of this and I'll try to make my point with this. This morning, um, coming back through the only roundabout I'm familiar with, there's a couple on the website that you guys have posted that I looked at, is the city square. It's right out front. Pretty functional intersection except for peak times of the day, but our road is currently functional except for peak times of the day. You're trying to create a 24 hour solution for two to three hour problem. But this is what happens to a roundabout with one heavy direction of traffic, you've generated the need for people to do U-turns to go the other way. And when someone wants to go the opposite direction and one lane is blocked, it gridlocks the entire thing. I see this being a serious problem for Columbia Avenue because eliminating all of the left turn potential is gonna create massive amounts of U-turns, which when we're talking semis, are gonna stop that circle so that even the non-traffic direction gets blockaded, as happened this morning on our square. So. Okay. Well, if you'll supply the rest of your questions to Jonathan, he'll circulate them with the answers to the board and they'll post the answers on the website. Okay. And Can I just yeah. send you an email yeah, and do that? That'd be great. Okay. And again, all due respect to the concept and the designers, it's a difficult challenge you guys face, but in my business, my people get frustrated with me sometimes for indecision, but if all I have are bad decisions to make, sometimes it's better not to make one. Mr. Cameron. I'm Donnie Cameron, 1503 Columbia Avenue, and uh, since we don't have long to talk, I'll just make it. Uh, I'm Donnie Cameron. Uh, my office is 1503 Columbia Avenue. Since we don't have long to talk, I'll just make the point I've got to make. My dad built the Holiday Restaurant out there in 1965, and I think uh, Mr. Moody built in 64. So this is basically old Franklin we're talking about. Plain and simple, small business old Franklin. And I can't believe we're even talking about the roundabouts, still talking about them, but I guess we are. But if we do this, if y'all do this, and I know this, I know a lot of most y'all on the board, okay? And, and as a lot of us have tried to pres preserve old Franklin, spent a lot of time, effort, and money trying to preserve it. If we do this, it's gonna completely destroy the Columbia Avenue corridor as we know it today. It's gonna destroy it, plain and simple. There's no way around it. So I, I hope the, 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 the no, no build is still on the table because if we if we go in and do that, if city goes in and does it, it's going to destroy it as we know it. Some of the business is not going to make it. I know some, but don't care. But a lot of us do care. It's been here our whole life, born and raised here. So I hope the no bill is still on the table and we can st still discuss that. Because it, as the Mac catcher gets finished, it's going to relieve leave the traffic, a lot of the traffic, not all of it, but a lot of it. <coughs> My office is down there in front of uh, where Bobby Langley's uh, old car lot was. And when it's backed up there, I pull out there every day going to Spring Hill. It takes me approximately six minutes to get from there past tractor supply. That's what it takes me. I've timed it multiple times the, the, with, with, with the road conditions being the way they are. So thank you for listening to me. Mr. Hobb.
Hey, it's Paul Hoppy. I own the Pure Gas Station uh, Market Master on the corner of Columbia Avenue and Beasley Drive. This is our how many public meetings? This is the fourth official public meeting. Which is great. I want to thank the city engineers and Barge Wagner have been more than willing to listen. Tonight it's, it's great to have all the decision makers, the ones that hold our livelihoods in their hands. So if you've missed any of the the public meetings, I'd like to just summarize that I haven't heard any business owners want the roundabout or the five lanes. We've, you know, our main is we like the way things the way they are. I know, you know, you have to have change, but if you build a road, they will come. If you're trying to push more people in that quarter, great. But I'd much rather, you know, some of these projections go out to 2041. By that time, hopefully the entire bypass will be finished and we can leave the integrity of the inside Franklin the way it is. I've, I've been on that corner for 30 years and I'm a newbie on Columbia Avenue. You know, Donnie and, and Moody's, they, they, they're the long-term guys. I can't imagine what they're feeling. What we're having to do is pick between, you know, losing access to our businesses or encroachment on our businesses. And, uh, you know, the city of Franklin's been great to us, um, but we've, we've given a lot back um, you, I, there's three people you've got to you know, consider. You've got the people that just want to use this as a corridor to get from point A to point B. And, and for those people, let, let's, let's get them on the bypass. Let's get them around town. But for the local people that are wanting to visit the local businesses, let's keep the integrity inside the bypass the way it is. If somebody else gets up and, and tells you different, I just know that I've been at all the public meetings. None of the business owners are in favor of either one. It, just to you know, give you some information of where we're coming from. Yeah, the guy that you know gets up in West Haven and wants to get over the interstate or something. Yeah, he's going to want you know he's going to want man. I want to go. I want to get there. I want to be gone. But the, you know, right now we've got about a 50-50 balance of local traffic and people that are going, you know, wanting to just travel through the corridor. Um, the the third. People besides the ones that are just wanting to, you know, travel through, and the business owners are the people that are wanting, you know, sidewalks and bikes. The city of Franklin is abundant in those. I use them every day. My wife and I, you know, we walk four or five times a day in in the great city parks of Franklin. Um, and to affect the livelihood of not just myself. But further generations, my sons both work in the store with me for, you know, bikeways and sidewalks down an industrial area of town just doesn't make sense. Um, other people might disagree as far as the, uh, the business owners, but I just hadn't heard them come forward yet. So I just wanted to let you know as far as the businesses up and down Columbia Avenue, um, I have not heard anybody that's in favor of either one of the options. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Davis. Jeff Davis, uh, Discount Plumbing 101 Century Court. A couple of things, I'm quickly for no action. And I was curious on the roundabouts, are they counting, I noticed on the graphs you said semis peaked or heavy semi trucks, that kind of thing, peaked at certain hours. Were you taking that into consideration in the roundabout, them coming and going yes. as double traffic? They're, they're counted in there. And so what is the average time for, say, two semis in a row to come through a roundabout and go the other direction? Honestly, don't know off the top of my head. I mean, the time frame, it seemed, was a little bit quick when you start stopping traffic completely, going both directions with, say, two dump trucks and a couple of semis. And that's all I got. Thank you, sir. Any other comments from the board? Uh, any other questions or remarks? All right, I asked uh, after the last meeting, I think, I asked our staff and I also asked Barge Wagner for a video of a roundabout a street 
with the trucks and all going, I, this looks great. I want to see it yeah, in yeah. motion. Yeah, yeah we, can, we can access that right now well, and show you. Yeah. So that's what I want to see. Look at it. We did put that up on the website I of I last week. It okay. On the web page. She wants yeah. to see it here. I want sure. to see it on a big screen so that everybody in this room can see it and we can see it too. Sure. And the reason, the reason that we had the uh, all of the discussion about the roundabouts, I don't know who brought that up a while ago. We don't know anything about roundabouts. That's the reason we had so much discussion about it, because we were being taught what roundabouts are. I didn't know, except I've been, been on them in Europe, and they seem to work fine over there. But uh, that's the reason we had the discussion about it. But this is what I want to see, and I cannot make a decision about this until I see what's going on. Okay, so we have two videos that we put on the website to try to answer some of these questions and provide information. Wisconsin DOT has a significant number of roundabouts. We've also provided a lot of information of roundabout corridors. Now, the question keeps coming up, is there one that's exactly like Columbia Avenue? I've not found that roundabout corridor that's identical to Columbia. But we have, we have found many examples. And, and the, first, the first roundabout I'm gonna show you in Wisconsin is a roundabout that has uh, these are the ADTs on the different legs of it. Overall, it has over 38,000 vehicles per day that go through that roundabout. One leg of the roundabout has an ADT of 31,400 vehicles per day. And so I'll, I'll play this video first, and then I'll show you another video done wanna, by the I Wisconsin. I show it twice because I want to say something in between the first time you show it and show it again. Can't okay. you make it big? I'll, 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 yeah, I'll make it big, and then the second video that we'll show you is Wisconsin DOT that did a video, educational video on roundabouts in series. And so we'll, we'll watch both those. First one is the intersection that has 38,000 vehicles per day going through it. So with this, with this video, you can see the large truck, if sized appropriately, can handle it. It, it actually uses the truck apron there, uh, but stays in its lane other than utilizing the truck apron, which is appropriate. Uh, one, of the, one of the benefits about roundabouts is that there's continuous movement of vehicles through here, mm -hmm. and there's not the operation and maintenance associated with, with traffic signals. Yeah. This shows okay. another large vehicle negotiating this roundabout as well. The negative about roundabouts is the large physical impact it has right there at the intersection. Okay, I want you to show it again and show the truck coming out. And if you look on that second little part where the truck comes out, if you will notice that the pickup that is in the roundabout, which is supposed to have the right of way, has to stop to let the truck go through. Yeah. The truck should have yielded. Yeah. Well, yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, well, but I mean, that, that's why there's wrecks because people do stuff they shouldn't do. Well, well but why, why do they show that as their great example? Exactly. <laughs> I don't Make they your point. Okay, show okay. Yeah, so All right, just a minute, just a minute. Wait until the next one. Is it the trailer truck? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. The pickup yeah. almost hits the trailer. That's right. Well, he stopped. He did stop right, but he had the right of way. Yeah. I don't blame okay. the asphalt. I blame the driver. Yeah. Well, wait. Okay, right here. See how that one in the right of uh, in in the roundabout, the pickup has the right of way, but it had to stop because the truck had gone on. Keep, keep it going. And they and they're showing this as a great example. That's okay. the, that's the problem I have. I, I would say that that pickup didn't. Yes, it did. It didn't. It didn't you, fully stop. Yes, it did. Yeah. Well, that, in my eyes, I didn't the, see it. The reason we provided anyway, this particular video it, it was just to show down. large vehicles moving through the roundabout, navigating the roundabout. That's right. All right, yeah. show the next so it's video. Not. Okay. So. This bigger is my, my. <laughs> Again, this is a, a roundabout <laughs> corridor, <laughs> and this video is put on by the Wisconsin DOT. That's right. So is there audio? There, there, there is, but it's just There's some of the guys in there. Okay. It's really kind of silly. Okay. <laughs> Actually, I forgot I had the audio on this one. Can you put the audio on? Yeah. Remember, it's got that snazzy music. That's all right. <laughs> there, there's an explanation that goes with this one, so we'll include the audio. Oh, 
four it's points. Just it's just here, though. We don't have audio. Yeah. So this just shows multiple roundabouts in series. Where's this at again? Again, you can notice the median, the full it's width there between closer. roundabouts. These are very closely spaced roundabouts yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first video just shows them driving it. The second, the second video, they're going to cut to it here in a second, starts to show large vehicles negotiating that roundabout. And these are double lanes similar to what we're mm -hmm. proposing. Correct. Yeah, these are very, very similar. With, with the and we sent out a web link. If you go to their website, they have they have been putting in roundabouts all over the state. This shows them following a semi truck. You can see how they use the uh, the, the turn aprons to accommodate the large trucks. This is this is coming on a side street here is what this is. If you like techno jazz, listen to the video with the uh, with sound on. Yeah. Jeez, I should have given you a couple really good. You know, the, the other thing that you know we we sent out is it, it shows that they actually are using roundabouts to gate uh, interchanges. And so there's a lot of examples throughout the country of where instead of your tight urban diamond, they're, they're literally putting two roundabouts on interchanges because it can handle the volumes. True. And this shows a, a oversized truck <coughs> using a roundabout here. This is a, another good example of how oversized vehicles negotiate roundabouts. The chase car is in the back. <laughs> <laughs> They're taking both lanes. Did you notice there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's an oversized uh -huh. look, too. But I mean, look, see? <laughs> well, not there, the other one, right before And, and so, again, if, if designed properly, the roundabout can accommodate it. Same with an intersection. If not designed properly, an intersection will not handle that size vehicle. Got a question on Yes, I want to make a comment about that. I looked at this, uh, you know, because it, there, there appears to be very little traffic uh, on this on this last the one there mm -hmm. yeah. and I, I looked online to see if I could find some traffic counts the only traffic count I found for this particular town I guess was one where it was was one from from Wisconsin dot whatever that is uh, it showed one traffic count that they had made and it was uh, going across the bridge across the river and it was only 10,000 vehicles a day so these things have a much less traffic count first one had 38,000 I know they did yeah. I know I know I'm saying on this one That's only oh I'm sorry no I said on this one only because it has the series the other one that has the 38,000 again has I think only the one only the one roundabout there yeah that that is a signal signal, signal roundabout yeah. there yeah. That's right you're correct mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Y'all look tired. What are next steps, just so the audience knows what? Well, the next step we based <laughs> on what we've been instructed is that they can't move any further until we give them a decision on what the basic design mm -hmm. is. Is it five lane with uh, limited modified access, as you said, or is it roundabout? So we have to give them the direction. Right, and so what are the information line. do you we need? We put on the next phone. We can put it on the next meeting if you'd like. We, we need you to just. You're out of order. All, all the options are on the table. Uh, and, and we just need you to give us guidance in terms of what additional, you know, we'll do additional design work if you choose one of the, the two that involve design. Uh, we'll do that work uh, to move forward into the next stages. Um, and, and that involves some of the, the questions that Paul said we would answer, which involve how much you want to do by way of pedestrian and trail, you know, where, what side, both sides, if you want to use our normal standard, if you want to do something less. There'll be other options to work through, but we need to know 
the general road configuration first before we can do other work on any of the elements that involve design. Alden, Brant, Blanton. That's okay. I, I yeah. know you're talking about I was trying to say Alden, Brant. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> um, one of the other things, too, that I had said in the past, and, and it came across as flippant, and I didn't mean it to, but what are the opportunities <clears throat> to balance the work hours so that we, I mean, given if we go towards any option, um, what are the opportunities to balance the work hours so it has the less impact on these businesses that have day hours? That's something we can definitely look at in construction. You can place incentives on the contract to get it done faster. We can require nighttime work, which typically is more expensive, but we, we can do that. So there are options yeah. in construction. Right, and I, and I think that, you know, if we're to make a decision soon, and I think we're obviously gearing towards that, and I do appreciate everybody showing up tonight and the emails and the phone calls, and, um, you, you know, there are options more than two, and, and I understand that, but I think and for me personally on that the uh, downs boulevard um what you call the langford motors there's a proposed use there for is. that coming and it needs to be considered more than just an access at downs boulevard so but that's another story for another time but um i think I, I very much share the mindset of the tenure of the people that that do business in this corridor and I do think that we have to understand that that means something to some of us, or at least to me, I can say that. So being a part of, of anybody's livelihood being marred or paused or, you know, deleted is not something I want to be a part of. Um, but I think if we can offer solutions that will, will keep the impact less, then that's something I'd be a little bit more apt to make a final decision on. One other thing that I want to say, and um, is that I know that there's also the opportunity. Some people think if we say we don't want to do anything, that we can translate that money. And, and I know it's been said before, but to another, to take it to, to finish the southeast portion, um, I've made several phone calls, even at the T dot level. And while we know this, the deal is, as the MPO rates those projects, the money can't be transferred to what we want it would go to the next project that's, that's behind priority-wise. So I want you all to all know that if we say, no, we don't want to do this, can we have the money to go here, it's it not going to happen. Um, I don't know the ramifications of, of waiting for Mac Hatcher Northwest to stop or to go ahead and be built and how that changes the dynamic of this. Um, I do think that we need to figure out what our plan is but in, in my stance, I've got to be open to who it affects. So, and that considers the citizens who use it and the people who have their business on the opposite side of it. Alderman Peterson, you the last comment. You know, we, did, we, we looked at the roundabout, we looked at the five lane access management, is that right? We did not look at the five lane traditional, I'm just, I'm just, is that what happened tonight? Yeah, the, uh, the five lane traditional we had in the data for comparison's sake, but given some of the access concerns and operational and safety, we weren't recommending it, so we didn't go through that one today. Okay. But there, obviously the options are somewhat unlimited. We're trying to fine tune it down to these two as preferred, at least from an engineering staff side. Everybody else good? But I just want to say one thing to the people that feel that we need to wait for Matt Catcher. I'm telling you, don't wait. Don't wait. It ain't coming. Not, not that last leg. We've been talking about, uh, about this leg for years and years and years. This has been on the books for over 75 years. And, folks, we won't beat around to see it. That leg, that uh, north. Southwest. Northwest. Southwest. 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 Northwest will be bid in February. What? The Southwest. The Northwest right. will be bid but in February. But that other leg. Right. So I Southwest. don't know what we're waiting for. This morning, we went to Waffle House to eat breakfast. To get home, we could not, co we could not come on 96 East. We could not get on the interstate. We could not go Lewisburg Avenue. We could not go Columbia Avenue. We could not go Mac Hatcher. We had to go all the way down Coleman Road and come in uh, Carter's Creek Pike. I'm telling you, we need to do something now. We do not need to wait. 
You took the scenic tour this morning. What? You took the scenic tour this morning. We did. Thank goodness we didn't have to be at school or at work. <laughs> you should have been in a tractor All right. truck. <laughs> Thanks for everybody commenting. Yeah, been, uh, and if you have further comments or questions, please send them to us. Uh,